Hello guys, this is Lotus. Today I'm going to talk about a stamping, a workbench or punch pad or um, pricking iron station, whatever you call it. I'm happy I finally done it. A little bit of story behind, but first of all, I wish everyone happy new year. It's a bit late, but still it's a new year. I wish everyone happiness and good health. Um, I wish just everything goes well this year. 2023 was very rough ride with me, but 2024, I think it will be better. Um, yeah, much more, um, so to say, peaceful, thankful, and much more accomplishment in much, much better way, I should say. So, um, without a long, long uh, resolution wishes, I'd like to talk about what's in front of me here. So. Uh, I'm not sure if I've talked about it in the previous punching pad video that you need a lot of solid um, table for your pricking iron or punching. So uh, this is the now my new concept of making the punch or pricking iron work much easier for me. Uh, this is a solid wood and then also a plywood, very thick one, and also the um, cutting board, very thick one. Again, the leather, and depending on what you're doing, you can use your small table anvil as your striking area for gluing. If you're doing pricking iron work, you can use your leather board and things like that. So these two are not that important, I'll put it away just for now. So I'm just going to talk about a little bit. So this is solid wood. So long, long story short, um, I've been really thinking about building a work table that has a solid, solid wood. It's like about 10 centimeter thick, minimum. So the bigger, the thicker the wood, the less vibration you lose your um, energy when you strike a striking tool, whether it's a punch or a pricking iron. And I've been thinking about it to build one and then um, the amount of energy and effort that you're trying to build into a workbench about the weight also. It's enormous. Um, you need also strong leg for that because the table itself is very thick and heavy and you need to have a strong uh, strong um, leg for that. So if uh, the project gets bigger and bigger, I'm not living in a huge house. Um, I live in a very small house and I need don't, I don't have that much of space and um, it was too much a project to, to accomplish. I mean, I could do that, but it will take a lot of money and time. So I was thinking, hmm, I can't do that. So I was thinking, what should I do? And then I was just looking around random things and just finishing my house project and so on. But then I just realized that I could buy this solid wood, um, this type of um, chunk of wood. As for this is interior purposes, it's just a solid wood. You see there are cracks here. It's not so much of a perfect um, perfect condition but everyone every every wood has a crack it's it's a it's not even also a one solid piece of wood but I did knew that uh, this is not an issue for me the crack isn't doesn't go deeply um, I glued all these pieces together so I can't really show you what it's like and you know, from top but then it's not so deep it's not going to the center it's only the like about this length um, this crack so I thought it's a big deal uh, it's not a big deal and um, yeah so I bought it and on top I just uh, wanted to finish nicely with the solid, um, not solid, the plywood, and then on top this. I just um, for some reason I didn't want to strike surface right below the the joint and the glued wood together. So I just wanted to make another piece of it. Anyway, it's, it's super solid, and on at the bottom, if you, I'm not sure if you can notice, I glued a solid this black stuff. This is a felt um, that you can buy on a craft store. It's a very thick felt, um, reduce the, the noise. I don't want to bother my neighbor. Um, I try to not to make any things after 9 or 10 p.m., but sometimes I, I wish. Um, but for now, I live in an apartment, so I shouldn't make, um, I don't want to make, um, well, awake or bother my neighbor. That's my also first thing, so I put that just in case. So while I strike it here, also, when I film, I hope I don't get that vibration to that um, tripod and then get that um, image like shaken. So it's also, for me, it's important. So that was the two most concerned and that's the, um, the thing that I did. Now, hammers. Uh, I have a lot of hammers. Some of them are beautifully made. 
but I don't use it. But the, these hammers that I hear, that you see here, are the hammers that I made or bought, and I use it very often. So because of the punch area, I'll just show you one by one. This is the Japanese forging hammer that I made long, long time ago. Filed the square hole. It's a very nice wood. I use it for gluing the big stuff. It has a big, very wide area to glue. Um, it's a very well-made hammer. It's my first hammer. I really like it a lot. It's a pear wood handle. I like it. I used to polish the handle very slick, but then it was actually very slippery to handle. So I, I sanded it down so it looks a bit matte now. So it has a very nice, smooth but rough texture on the surface. So um, it is a nice handle. I tried to keep the polished area on to the outer side of the hammer rack so that it doesn't um, ruin the polished surface. This is copper hammer. This one I bought is Thor um, copper hammer, size number one. It's an uh, English made um, copper hammer. It's um, very good stuff. I cut the handle a bit shorter so that it's easier to handle. Um, it's not, it used to be long like this, but I cut the handle. Um, it's a copper hammer, good for um, stamping my knives or um, just striking any um, unhardened tool that I don't want to strike with the steel hammer, I struck with the copper hammer. But careful though, uh, because of the copper gets super also compressed and stressed, this copper gets super hard than normal copper. This is called a um, uh, strain hardening. So when the copper gets stressed, like compressed like this, it gets harder. So if you're really hitting a soft steel, your steel will get dense and this thing will just stay like this. So you are actually heating a quite um, hard a metal object to a soft steel. So you will still leave a mark. Um, so please do not do that. Um, this is, it gets hard um, after it's used. So yeah, that's that. And of course, uh, this system that I built, it's very thick. It's about four millimeter thick leather. And I just screw it in as a rack and I made these specific holes that fits this hammer specifically onto the place. And um, I tried to put that everything into similar level so it looks nice. Um, Japanese ha hammer, another dog hammer handle. You use it for gluing. Next, this is very nice um, hammer area. This is one that I uh, I love. This is a Blanchard hammer, very antique one. It's uh, it says number four, but this sizing is a bit different than current sizing. It's a bit smaller, I think. I had to refurbish it, polish it, and uh, new handle. Um, a bit of antique style. Also, I made handle, so it's uh, now ready to go. So this is a Blanchard hammer. This is also, this is more Italian style hammer, uh, but also also um, French hammer as well in a way. Also good for gluing. It's a bit light, it has a bit um, wider surface than the Blanchard hammer, but the head face is not so hard on this as the Blanchard hammer. It gets scratched quite easily. Um, that's the fact the only I don't like about this hammer. I wanted to also harden it somehow, but um, ever since a um, few failures, I stopped um, hardening uh, the old antique hammers. Uh, those are those are uh, stressed quite often already, and if you want to harden it, it might crack, and uh, you don't know what seal they used. So it's just the hardening is a bit too, so to say, gamble, and it's better to keep the antique tools as it is. So yeah, I just polished the head, and uh, that's it. So that's just too small. Um, delicate hammer, I should say also for gluing. It depends. Um, three two hammers are all gluing that I just showed you. Japanese hammer and these things. But it just depends on what I'm hitting and um, the condition of each hammer. And uh, just yeah, when I feel like it, I use it. So these are, um, this is my go-to hammer for pricking irons, so to say. This is Thor, rawhide hammer. Big one. This is size number five. I'll put the link in the description box where you can buy this hammer. It's a very nice Thor hammer. 
made in England, rawhide hammer, good stuff, good weight, good size, it has a large area, it means you can strike it much, much more easier because it's less likely to miss, so, so it's good, it's really good, yeah. Uh, this is Japanese carpenter's wood hammer, I, to be honest, I don't use this too often, but um, just for anything that I strike wood, I will use it, maybe cutting dies, maybe because of such a large surface, uh, made of wood, makes it also very soft. Um, I like the size of it, I like the look of it. Um, I haven't used it extensively yet. You can see the face is quite new, uh, but I, I, find, I think it's cool because it's all made of wood. Uh, beautiful craftsmanship and the hole is also square. Um, I think it's a very nice um, craftsmanship here. Yeah. Also very heavily waxed, uh, less likely to crack. Uh, just very nice, nice um, wood. I think it looks very good in a set. Um, I just keep it here for look. This one is just for look at the moment. Yeah. And here is a section that I'm very proud of because these two hammers that I made, this one is Barry King hammer for, um, um, this is um, leather stamping. So um, I haven't done leather stamping extensively, but something I want to try as well in the future, very soon. And this is something that you stamp it with a basket stamp and so on. Uh, I see a lot of American leather, leather workers do it on their um, knife sheath or buff leather sheath and so on. Um, but uh, I wasn't that a uh, big fan of that stamping. But uh, in case of stamping, I'll use the area for stamping. So I just thought it's a better idea to have that one for my, myself. See. Thick leather makes it look like a, some kind of um, plastic, <laughs> see, that keeps the shape, see. Um, I didn't wet this, I mean, it was just a leather that's thick, so it just stays like this. Very, very strong stuff, doesn't sag. So, I already showed you these two hammer in previous video, just in case you missed it, so I'm just going to show you. This is ball pin hammer that I made with a seat 45 proper hammer steel. This is the flat side. This is the ball pin side with my logo and everything. For flat, I put number zero. For ball pin area, I put number two, my logo. Just um, the cool thing about this is the handle. Um, it's a square, but towards the, at the hammer head, it gets super thin. So being square really makes you that you can control this hammer. Um, I specifically put this square kind of handle so that when you pin your um, rivet tools, uh, rivets and stuff, this will not rotate easily. So this will just stay in my hand very accurately. So this is one of the very um, best um, hammer that I made, also square hole. I felt it and also hardened it properly. It's super hard, um, doesn't get scratched easily. You know. One thing I don't like about the hammer head is that I prefer the tip of the hammers, um, the, the working end, very hard so that it doesn't get scratched easily. That means you can keep that um, polished area longer um, than, so well, it, of course it gets super difficult to polish it, but then I prefer that way so that you, can, you keep the working end smooth as much long as possible. Uh, soft hammers, they get scratched quite easily. This is quite hard. Um, so I'm very proud of. So, and this one is a mini hammer. It has a very good weight to it. Um, it's a super mini um, hammer. It's like tiny, tiny hammer. Kind of Thor um, style hammer. You see, you can see huge hammer head, but then small handle. But then also for gluing as well. So it's like, has a very good feel to it um, because of tiny, tiny handle. It's almost like popsicle style handle, I call it. Popsicle style handle. But then the, the hammer has a very good weight. Um, because of this being too thin, you don't want to make the, the sideway pressure or you don't want to like hit it like this. Um, I see a lot of um, Japanese carpentry technique also use the side of the hammer. Mm, um, it gets super the head is super hard, the uh, side is relatively soft, I hardened it up a special way. But the uh, main purpose is for also just for striking. Um, this type of hammer I think you can see with a lot of metal craft workers who use this to engrave and stuff. But uh, I don't do metal working at the moment too much. 
this is also for gluing it's just one of the thing that I also made um, so yeah just also wanted to just put it here as to also conversation piece so yeah that's it so I made this and a little bit of story about remember Mr. Guzman so um, really really short version guys so this cutting area this cutting board I used to have it in my previous video and I wanted to cut it in smaller um, to, for, to fit this um, uh, punching station this is 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter if you guys are curious about it and um, so this person <laughs> helped me to cut this um, from um, from a place where I I asked them uh, because the other employee didn't want to do it and he refused the job but then he helped to, helped to cut it it's a long story I don't want to make this video too long and um, just wanted to say, tell you guys the story, the model of the story, without telling you what happened. Um, uh, when when you think the person, the other person, um, really ruins your goal, uh, don't don't let down by it. Um, keep your head up and try again nicely. Uh, it will help you. Uh, it will get you through what you need to achieve. So I learned that. So. Um, I just want to put this, uh, remember Mr. Guzman. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, you know, if you live in a very um, a place where people don't want to work or people just um, feel annoyed by the task that you ask and they just can refuse you for doing a job, then it's quite frustrating because you know it's possible, but then they tell you, oh, no, it's not possible. And that's quite, um, gets you quite stressed sometimes, but, uh, person you know, you know if you talk nicely again with a different person then they will do it so um, keep your cool keep your um, head high and uh, that's I think what you need so I just wanted to put this as a small story of how I made this punching pad exact size as this one one down downside about this punching station is that it's too low so it means that it's too um, too down so this is only about 70 centimeters or so. I wish I could, it could be high as my working table at the same height so that I could work in parallel in the same height, but somehow it is lower. So I have to I have to scoot down a little bit or I have to use a small chair to use this workbench properly. But uh, I don't think it's a big issue. I think uh, I think it's okay. I'll, I'll see what I can do as, as, I, as I use it. If it's too uncomfortable, maybe I should use um, build a new one things like that so anyways that's it I will use this um, punchy station now uh, for future and uh, I wish everyone again happy new year I'll see you guys next video bye bye